Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tutorials, and in this video, I'm gonna be starting a new series called What Is, and we're gonna be doing these on Wednesdays. So it's sort of gonna be a What Is Wednesdays, where we cover an individual topic through a course of a video where I simply just describe in plain English what the heck this thing is, because uh, web development stuff has so many terms thrown around left and right, and you just kind of get lost in it all sometimes. So to honor my new React series, I'm going to cover React in this video. The topic of this video is, hey, what is React? What is it exactly? And how does it sort of help me in my day-to-day -day life if I'm not familiar with it? So if you have any more topics that you wanna see covered under what is Wednesdays, where I do a dive into what exactly this thing is, let me know in the comments and I'm gonna get to them. So let's get started right now. So this is going to be the first of many of these videos where I'm going to essentially break down a topic. Now, this is video is gonna be more about what actually is React and what it's going to do for you more so than how can you use it. If you wanna learn how to use React, I just put out uh, a new series, React 16 for everyone. You can check it out. The playlist is on the front page of Level Up Tutorials right now, or you can just head to leveluptutorials.com. That is a premium series, so you'll get six episodes for free, see if it's for you, and then if you want, you can uh, purchase it or subscribe to get access to all of that. But so the point of this video is really to just talk about, man, what is React? So if you know what React is, this video is not for you, okay? Uh, this video is for the people that have seen it being spouted off here and there, right? They've seen all of the hype about React. They've seen a lot of people talking about it and they've seen the code or maybe they just don't get what the heck it is, right? Like, why would I need this? What is the point of this? And simply put, React is a, a JavaScript library for building user interfaces. They say it right up front here, and to me, this is the best description of it. Now, people like to maybe claim it's a framework or, or say it does this and this and this and this, but at the end of the day, you just really need to think about this. You're building a website, and you need something to be interactive or potentially a dynamic interface, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, crazy interactive. It could just be a general interface. I mean, they make uh, static site generators out of React now. So either way, the whole point of React is just for building interfaces. Whether that's interfaces that you click on something and something else changes and data loads and stuff like that, that's all great. But at the end of the day, you're just building interfaces. And you can drop in if you wanted to, right? You could have a module of your site that is React. I mean, maybe React is just rendering a very small portion of your website. It could be an entire HTML website. And using React, you could drop in an interface. Maybe this interface needs to be dynamic or something like that. So usually I think the misconceptions about React are that it does more than you think it does, right? Uh, people might think that it's a whole framework. It has all this sort of stuff in it. And in reality, React is just code that makes it dead simple to interact with elements and build dynamic components. And by components, I just mean areas or things in your website, right? A good way to think about it would be to even just look on this page overall. Like what could be a component here? Well, this search area up top here, search docs, this could be a component. So if you're to think about it, this particular user interface requires that when you click on it, and you start typing that a list of search terms just start coming up and then allows you to select one and then go on to something else. But this thing just sort of doesn't happen with basic HTML, right? And you couldn't necessarily do all of this in the same way server side or something like that. This requires that when the user in the browser starts typing something, some dynamic stuff happens and some interfaces change or load or, or something like that. And so that's really the purpose of React, right? It's to build cool stuff like this, stuff that is dynamic. Now, let's talk a little bit about what React looks like. And if we kind of scroll down here, we can see some examples. And you may confuse code that looks like this with, well, React itself. And that's a major turnoff for some people is the use of HTML in JavaScript, and it's it's not necessarily HTML. It's a language called JSX, which, 
by the way, is optional. You don't even have to use JS. If we were to uncheck this checkbox, you could see that this is what React looks like without JSX. Now, honestly, it's recommended to use JSX, and I personally do. It's a nice way to work in it, but it shouldn't turn you off because honestly, one of the benefits of using JSX is that you're able to interact with the DOM in the way that you know how, right? The way that's very familiar. You've been writing HTML for all of these years, and now, well, we can write HTML in a way that's 100% connected to JavaScript. And it's really connected in a nice way that you can interact and have events and have state and have encapsulation and all sorts of really great stuff that you can't have with HTML. Not only that, but it provides some sort of structure where a component sort of encapsulates everything that a component would do instead of writing a bunch of jQuery, right? Because when you're writing a jQuery, you have your code that's interacting with the HTML and sort of does its stuff. But at the end of the day, those two things are entirely separate and they're interacting with each other. Here, this whole thing is encapsulated in one little thing here and uh, it just makes working with it just one-to-one -one super duper easy. In addition, components also have something called state where, well, you can change their state. And I had someone ask me that, uh, to do a what is video on state, which I'm going to do, like what is state? But in, in the essence of this, you could think of it like a toggle. The toggle has two states, on or off, right? And with React, you can set that into the component, this on or off value, and you can trigger it, change it, whatever, and then do something with that value further on. It's nothing groundbreaking in that regard, but the fact that this state lives within this component is, again, a nice way to encapsulate everything. Now, lastly, we have some really cool stuff. The fact that you're building components, I like to describe these, I don't know if this is a great metaphor analogy, but as uh, Lego blocks, right? You have these blocks that you're creating, which are components, and you can connect them together to make things. And the reason why this doesn't hold up entirely is because React has this parent-child relationship, obviously, that Lego blocks don't. But what's cool about this is, is that you can grab these different components from elsewhere, from NPM, from the internet, right? Something someone else has written, and you can drop it in your project and use it without having to write it. And they can be these macro things that generate full-on tables and charts, or they can be very micro, like a simple toggle component that simply just makes it so you don't have to write those state changes all the time. And these kind of things allow React to be so flexible. It's one of the reasons why it's really uh, just absolutely blown up in the community. Now, another great feature of React itself is that you can use React code on the client, server, or both. For instance, Level Up Tutorials has this code, right? And this is all built in React, and this is uh, front end in React. But if we were to look at the code here, you could see everything server side rendered as well, right? This code is coming straight out of the HTML that's loaded in this page. But here's the kicker. I wrote the same code client side and server side. That means I didn't have to write, uh, let's say if you're talking about WordPress or something, like that, I didn't have to write a WordPress theme and then write a WordPress theme in PHP and then write some JavaScript to interact with it in the DOM. Those are all together in one. So these are just some things about React and reasons why people like it. For the most part, it's a fairly small library for working with user interfaces, and it's extremely capable. One of the cool things that React did when it came out was, well, instead of trying to do everything, it tried to do just one thing really well. And because of that, the community is extremely flexible. And if you want to use other things in coordination with React, it's extremely easy. React's not trying to do everything. It's not trying to, it's just basically handling your user interface and how it's displayed and updated on the screen. So I've gone this far without talking about the virtual DOM, which is one of the features that uh, is one of the things that people really, really like about uh, how React performs. And essentially what the virtual DOM is, is, well, it's if you, well, the DOM, which is the document object model, is essentially what the browser sees as HTML, as a structure of your website, and it's how you interact with your website in the browser. Well, what React does is it basically 
is it creates an in-memory data structure cache. So it's caching what it looks like and then it's computing differences and then it's only changing what needs to be changed, right? Now, one thing that's great about that is you get some really, really fast page updates, right? When you change things and move things around, the only thing that needs to be changed is changed and everything else stays put, and therefore React can be extremely fast. Again, I mentioned this parent-child relationship as well, basically where data comes down from one component into the next, and it greatly mimics how you generally think of HTML structure overall. If you look at some of my code right here, you can see we have something like a toggle that wraps around a user menu wrapper that wraps around a user menu icon that wraps around a gravatar. Now what's interesting about this whole flow is that data can come down where I have the user passed into this component and then I can then use this same user in a child component. Whether it's in the same file or not, pass through something called props. Now, if you wanna learn about all this stuff again, check out the React course. But for the most part, you always have this sort of top-down data structure where stuff's going in from parent to child, and it makes knowing what's going where extremely easy. Now, and another thing that came about with React is React Native, allowing you to write, it's basically React code. Um, you can write essentially code that looks just like this. The only difference is you're using custom components built by Facebook that interact with native APIs to build real like native applications like not a a wrapper around an HTML site put into an app but a real application and that is something that's extremely powerful and really uh, you couldn't do before right you locations with JavaScript you just couldn't so again, all of this stuff, you hear the words JSX, you hear virtual DOM, you hear state, you hear things like Redux, which actually isn't part of React itself. Uh, you hear all of these things and think, gosh, React seems complex, and I don't want to write HTML inside of JavaScript. But at the end of the day, like I mentioned, that React is simply just a way to write user interfaces. You can use it as much or as little as you want. You don't need to build your entire app in React. However, uh, like I said before, because React can be server-side rendered, building your entire site in React is not a terrible idea. In fact, uh, I think it, in fact, there's a reason why it's really absolutely blown up. Now, another great thing about React is that it teaches you some actual legit JavaScript skills that you don't get from other frameworks. One thing I really like about React is that things are just based on JavaScript. For instance, we have a component, which is essentially just a class, right? Instead of being something far out of JavaScript world, we're defining a new class, and all it's doing is extending an existing class, and that class comes from React. That's what gives this component some of its powers, right? And even though there is some jargony stuff here, we still have a constructor, uh, we have we have methods in here, and we're using just straight up JavaScript. For instance, it, it doesn't try to do looping or anything like that for you. There's no ng4 or for loops and stuff built into React. You actually use legit array functions from JavaScript and you see things like map and dot filter and re reduce being used. And those things can be scary for uninitialized JavaScript developers or even web developers at all, right? If you haven't used that stuff, it looks scary. Arrow functions, all this stuff looks scary. But the great thing is, is that these are skills that you take with you outside of React. Uh, they're not React specific skills. This is straight up JavaScript skills. So another reason I really love working in React. Now let's talk about something else you can take with you. You can take your JSX and React code with you as well. There's a lot of other libraries that interface with React's API. For instance, we have Preact, which is a three kilobyte alternative to React with the same as uh, with the same ES 2015 API. So what's cool about Preact is that this library aims to be able to be uh, not necessarily a drop in replacement, but a, a replacement for React nonetheless. That's not going to make you feel locked into a Facebook project, um, but more or less locked but more or less feel right at home building your components. And another one is Inferno, which is a super fast library. Uh, although I, I don't know what the current speed comparisons to the latest version of React is. They do say it's five times faster than React, but uh, honestly, I'm not sure if this has to do with the latest version of React, which is a notable improvement on performance. 
And some quick things about the history of React, just so you know a little bit here. It was created by Jordan Walk, an engineer in Facebook. Um, basically, he was influenced by Angular and some other stuff and created React, where it was first used in Facebook's feed in 2011. And so it had been around for a little bit uh, before it was open sourced in 2013. And when it was open sourced in 2013 is really when it started to catch on. And then in uh, 2015, uh, React Native came out, and that sort of blew the doors off again, sort of blowing people's minds with the ability to create native apps in JavaScript. And most recently, in 2017, React released their latest version 16, which is also known as React Fiber. Basically, it's an entirely new core algorithm that makes this thing run super fast and became and is going to be the foundation for a whole bunch of future improvements and uh, things that fix some of the issues that people have with maybe some of the way that we write React components. So that's pretty much it. If there's one thing you can take away from this is that React is not this big scary beast. It's not this giant foreign alien. It's not something that's going to destroy the way you write HTML or understand websites, but it will completely blow your mind in terms of how easy it is to build excellent user interfaces. One of the reasons why it's so popular, although it is polarizing when people see things like HTML in uh, JavaScript as well as the general look of React, it can, it can definitely put some people off. Uh, but for those people, because I was certainly one of them, you know, I was initially put off by the way React looked and felt, I would recommend that you plow through that and learn it because honestly, nothing has made me a better developer than learning React. And I feel like I can say that confidently. So check it out, reactjs.org. If you want to learn more about React, head over to leveluptutorials.com where you can become a pro and get access to the latest React 16 for Everyone series. You can check out the preview videos here and see if they're for you. I teach you how to build a really cool app. So check it out. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know what other topics you'd like to see me covered on what on what is Wednesdays, okay? Just leave something you would like to see covered in the description below and I will get to that when I can. I'm gonna try to do one of these a week. So hopefully as we go here, we end up building a huge library of what is sort of definitions about stuff. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.